VBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. So there have been a lot of news posts that have been coming out over the last 24 hours about a Boston College student that killed himself on the day of graduation, and his girlfriend has been charged with manslaughter. You might have seen this in a few headlines recently, or if you're listening to this at a later date, we're going to be talking about the case of Alexander Urtula and his girlfriend, Yuen Young. And um, this, of course, took place in Boston, and I'm over here on Boston.com because I like the way that they structured their article. If um, you do any Google searches on this, you'll find that it's covered by most major news outlets. CNN did something about this, but um, I really try to avoid them when I'm doing anything related to crime and events because their coverage is not very detailed. And there were some good lines in this article. And I thought that this could be a very valuable chance to have a discussion. The first and foremost thing I, I would say is, since this is such a new development, once again, most of the news has been coming out in the last 24 hours about this case. I mean, like, to kind of, like, going viral, that is. So the news is still happening. We often don't really cover too many cases where the news is still coming out immediately because that might mean that maybe we don't have the full story yet. So always bear in mind that there's the possibility that we could be learning something new about this in the next coming days. But this case is, um, there's some very important things that we should be talking about. First, let's give a little bit of an introduction. Roughly 90 minutes before the May 20th commencement ceremony, Alexander Urtula killed himself. Now prosecutors are charging his 21-year-old girlfriend from South Korea and then fellow Boston College student in his death. Suffolk County District Attorney Rachel Rollins announced involuntary manslaughter charges Monday against In Young Yu after she said investigators found evidence that she was physically, verbally, and psychologically abusive toward Urtula during their 18-month relationship. And it goes on to say that um, in 18 months they exchanged seven, no sorry, just in the, um, they were together for 18 months, right? And in the final two months of their relationship, they exchanged 75,000 text messages, but about 47,000 of those, more than half of them, were just uh, very malicious statements made by In Young Yu, and she was um, just saying the verbally and psychologically abusive things. In short, she was manipulating him into suicide, and she was trying to coerce him into killing himself. And as they says right here, a barrage of tens of thousands of text messages. She's urging him to commit suicide, urging him to take his own life. And um, it, she was actually present, allegedly. Once again, the uh, developments are still coming out. You was actually allegedly present even when Urtula leapt to his death from the roof of the Renaissance parking garage by Northeastern's campus. This really just goes to show you that things like psychological abuse are very real. And in... Also, first and foremost, this stuff is not protected by law. She was charged with involuntary manslaughter, and for very good reason. This isn't so much a free speech issue because the laws are pretty clear. If you use language to kind of incite immediate violence, it is not protected. I mean, like, words that can lead to immediate violence are not protected, and she's very blatantly encouraging him to take a violent act against himself. 47,000 text messages. This isn't just, like, a statement that was taken off the cuff, and even, especially if she was present during the, um, the attempt of suicide, which was indeed successful. It sounds like an absolutely horrendous tragedy, and you gotta just wonder if all of these events are true, the developments are still coming out, but if all of these events are true, what a, what a sadistic and malicious individual. There was a very similar um, case that was going on about 30 years ago. I only say that because In Young Yu is a uh, South Korean, and there was a case of an American woman who committed a murder in South Korea and, of course, came back to the United States of America, and they did it on 48 hours. But because the murder happened in Korea... She could only face trial if she went back to South Korea for the trial. Well, what do you think's happening with this case now with In Young Yu? She is in South Korea, and she can only be held accountable and face the trial if she chooses to go back to America. Extradition law is very tricky, and it is very difficult. And I believe, though, that in international law, no nation has the kind of responsibility to give up their citizens for extradition. 
like um they don't have to voluntarily give up somebody to be extradited to another country that's kind of done to uh, sort of protect somebody in the sense that maybe they would say like oh well you were in you know a country in the middle east and you said something bad about their religion and they want you extradited to face you know life in prison or something like that it's done to kind of protect things that aren't in line with your country's certain views on freedoms and such as well as a host of other issues that's just one very simple example but like in a case of you know something like murder you know some murder or in this case involuntary manslaughter someone commits a very heinous act but then they just return to their country of origin and then they can't be extradited but uh, what's going to happen is they're going to be trying to use a few different measures once again that doesn't it means a nation doesn't have to voluntarily give up any of their citizens i believe that that's just it ties into something called the international law and the right of abode. The right of abode is like you have a home country that, you know, is you know, like kind of the borders that are going to protect you. But they're going to use something called Interpol's Red Notice to request her arrest. And like there are a variety of ways that they can do this. Also, some if some nations have extradition treaties, there are some clauses that are tied into that. And uh, that's why Edward Snowden chose to... Um, go to Russia first on his way toward Ecuador. Russia has uh, no extradition treaty with um, the United States of America, and that's mostly done to protect certain kind of like oligarch individuals like Semyon Mogilevich and such. But um, to digress from that, the, let's keep reading here on Boston.com. The charges echo the case against Michelle Carter, the 23-year-old Plainville woman, serving a 15-month sentence for pressuring her then-boyfriend Carter Roy III over the phone to follow through on his plan to take his own life in 2014. Carter was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in 2017, earlier this year. The Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court upheld the ruling, determining that her actions met the legal threshold of wanton and reckless conduct. I mean, and yes, absolutely, this is one of the things that should be very obvious, um, and it's very good to have these discussions. This type of stuff is very illegal, you know, like if someone is, like, talking about suicide, and then you're just going to try and encourage them to take their own lives and such, and even, like, we're not talking about one or two lines, she's on the phone with him, and she's kind of encouraging him to take his own life, or in the case of In Young Yu that we previously mentioned, sending 47,000 text messages trying to get him to do that, um, I mean, manipulation is a powerful thing, and um, the reason why I liked uh, this article from Boston.com is they give kind of a very kind of, um, well, I think that let's just read out their sort of statement on that. Now, the um, attorney Rollins added that tragedy is an example of systemic domestic violence. The systemic domestic violence epidemic that does not discriminate when it comes to economic status sexual orientation, gender, race, religion, or nationality. It manifests in both physical and non-physical ways. Domestic violence is not perpetrated by one type of abuser. A perpetrator is not limited by their gender or the gender of their partner. Domestic violence may not always look the same, but it's always about power and control. And once again, this is coming from Boston.com's article on the uh, death of Alexander Ortula and uh, his girlfriend, who is now charged with involuntary manslaughter, In Young Yu. Sometimes her name is written in the more traditional form, Yu In Young. Now, um, I think that that was just a very profound statement. You really couldn't see, though, that this stuff is about power, it's about manipulation, it's about just coercion, and it's, it's, it's not acknowledging someone else's humanity, and that's not going to be limited toward any particular race or gender or anything to do with that, any sort of thing of the like, you're really just going to see that this is going to know no boundaries. And when you think about involuntary manslaughter, I wouldn't really think about somebody like In Young Yu as, you know, the first person that would come to mind, you know, someone who's just an international student, she's an attractive female, but at the same time, I mean, she sounds like she did something very, very malicious and probably has some major unhealed childhood traumas that she just decided to project onto her boyfriend, Alexander Urtula. But uh, once again, though, we don't know the full story until the trial happens, innocent until proven guilty. I'm really quite curious to know if they're going to be able to extradite her through this thing like the Interpol, the Interpol Red Notice, excuse me. And they would... I mean, we're just going to kind of follow the news about this one. Maybe we'll post a few updates. But I just really, um, I think it's very important to remember that this type of stuff is about power. 
It's about um, domination. So many of the crimes associated with murder and manslaughter are tied to the concept of domination, antisocial behavior, and the desire to dominate somebody. And you see this in a variety of forms. Some are more destructive than others, but domination is usually the key that binds things together. Well, that's all for me now. If you have anything to say, please drop a comment below. And um, if you're listening to this in 2019, I highly suggest reading some other articles. You put it into Google, you will find countless things that have been written about the case. There's a lot of stuff out there. And until next time.